Um, I think with us, it's not really with the environment because we're the Green Party. We engage young people um, through human rights, social justice reasons, things that really um, affect them, like for example tuition fees um, and those sorts of things. And the environment would be secondary, I'd say. Um, lots of the people who come to us are already very informed about the environment and they realise that in fact they're the ones who are going to have to deal with the catastrophe of climate change when it hits up. So I mean it's already killing lots of people around the world as we speak. Um, but I think in Britain it doesn't affect people on a daily basis yet. Um, but I think a lot of young people are very aware now that actually it's going to be them that's going to have to deal with this catastrophe of floods and drought and mass immigration. So um, yeah. I think that that's one compelling reason to kind of get involved. People who are cynical towards climate change, I think, tend not to be young people, to be honest, for the reasons I've just outlined. Um, climate change deniers um, are usually, I'd say, kind of right-wing people who, um, who see the economy and the environment as um, as two kind of separate entities um, and that you can't have and we see you know that they're linked basically um, and that we can't just abuse the environment for financial gain um, otherwise we'll just be in a worse state of affairs. I think you do occasionally, very very occasionally we'll have people who've read a book or seen a movie about um, climate change not existing or that you know if you look at our history we've had ice ages we've had you know this change in climate and that it's completely normal um, the fact remains that humans are a massive contributor to, um, to carbon emissions um, and the science tells us that we need to reduce that we need, we, we need not to raise levels by uh, two degrees. And so really we're, we're in a stage now where we have to do as much as we can right now, otherwise we'll have missed the boat basically. I think that um, organisations like Greenpeace are fundamental in lobbying the government because at the moment we don't have a Green Party politician within the House uh, uh, Parliament. And so I think it's really crucial that we do have people there who are able to do a, a massive media front, front, to grab attention, get the headlines out there so that people see how real this situation is and that there are people out there who are just, you know, terrified by the prospects of what's going to happen. Um, the Green Party um, you know, it's a last resort, we'd say, for you know direct action. We're all for non-violent direct action, but it would be the, the absolute last resort in a democracy. Um, at the moment, you could argue that the um, the political situation isn't that democratic because of our electoral system, which means that um, smaller parties don't have the same sort of um, you know value in terms of their vote as larger parties do. Um, and so we're hoping that that's something that will soon be changed with the reform of Parliament and so that we'd have um, proportional representation there instead of this crazy, archaic, first-past-the-post system. Um, I think two controversial policies would probably be legalisation or decriminalisation of certain drugs. Um, possibly leading to most drugs being either decriminalised or legalised and uh, prostitution which is um, an issue which I'd say is quite split in the party whether we want to legalise it or decriminalise the, the buying of it, uh, the, no, sorry, the selling of it and criminalise the buying of it. So I think they're probably the two most controversial issues but um, when you look at our social justice policies in fact we're the only part, current party, uh, I'd say, who really sticks to them. You know, we had the main parties to say one thing and do something else. We've seen, seen under Labour the last 12 or 13 years that the gap between rich and poor has actually you know, got bigger. 
So I think we're seeing a lot of people actually coming to us for those sorts of policies, social justice and human rights, and not necessarily the environment. But I think now that we're in this situation, it's quite dramatic really. Um, and as I said before, the science tells us that we can only limit a rise of two degrees. So um, I think that a successful outcome of Copenhagen can only be, um, it can only be said to be a success if by 2020 we limit our reductions by um, 40, EBU reductions by 40%, by 2050 our global reductions are 90%. Now they're quite extreme targets, that's quite a challenge, um, but I think that it's only necessary. Um, I, I don't know whether, um, I would hope that those sorts of things would be the outcome, I'm, I don't know whether they will be, but I'm, I'm certainly given some um, motivation by people lobbying their own governments, and hopefully due to that, politicians will listen in December at Copenhagen. around um, Copenhagen, he's contributed to that, so there's a very catchy video that they've done, they've got a website, you know, that's probably the best that he's done. In terms of um, mistakes, well, saying yes to the expansion of Heathrow and those sorts of things, you know, putting lots of money into roads, building a new roads and not um, into um, public transport, making it a lot cheaper, you know, so that it, it's in public ownership once again um, and it's not privatised. So encouraging people to not use their car and actually get them on train because it's going to be cheaper. I think that he could have done a lot more and he just hasn't basically. It's quite difficult really because I'm vegetarian so um, food is and, and meat consumption is probably um, the most detrimental thing that we do to the environment so I, 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 um, I only, I'm a vegetarian but I'm not vegan yet. Um, I cycle, I do fly very occasionally so that's probably the worst I think. I recycle and things, yeah. Oh, oh no, I'm a consumer. I buy clothes <laughs> and shoes, that's definitely the worst. <laughs> yeah. very radical, challenging targets to be put forward. I'd also like to see um, you know, an equitable distribution of those. So, for example, the EU, I think, should fund at least half of the developing countries' targets. I'd like to see that. That would be fairer, if you like. Um, and I think we just need very, very high targets in, in December. I don't know whether that's going to be achieved. I don't know whether politicians are going to listen. But I find it incredibly frustrating that they are, in effect, in, in effect accountable to us, the people, because we put them there, yet they fail again and again to listen to us. I think I am positive, yeah. I do a lot of canvassing about, um, you know, door, door knocking and... Um, People are often saying to me, you know, I want to not use my car, I want to start using public transport, I want to recycle a plethora of materials on a weekly basis, but I'm afraid the political will isn't there yet, so these people feel kind of constrained, unable to do what they want to do because of the resources available to them or because of financial constraints. So I think that it's not, we shouldn't be focusing on people here, we should be focusing on governments and councils and elected representatives and bodies to really fight for things that people want, want to take part in. You know, um, we do however live in a, a society based on consumerism and um, I would like to see the advertising industry heavily controlled because I don't think that helps at all. And we simply can't go on consuming. I think most of us realise that we just simply can't go on consuming at the rate at which we are at present. 
Um, and in fact, does it make us happier? You know, what makes us happy is speaking, you know, speaking with friends, sharing time with family, going on walks, you know, eating good food. And they're the kind of things that we as the Green Party would like people to, to spend time doing and enjoying, you know, good, organic, local food and having more time for their families and friends and doing things that they really enjoy, not spending their time on the high street, you know, on Oxford Street or wherever, shoving past people and having this hustle and bustle around them. I mean, it, it doesn't de-stress us and it certainly doesn't make us happy.